thank you very much, Ron. A pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the uh, time here. Uh, I, I've had a tough time concentrating ever since Justin said that he's a billion dollar company. He's private. I'm waiting for that to go public. I was just like, oh my gosh, how can I invest? I've got a lot of stuff to talk about here. Um, as Rob mentioned, there's a there's a whole bunch of stuff that's out there. A lot of options with using the cloud for a lot of different things. Talk to a lot of people today, or you heard from a lot of people today about a lot of performance sort of areas. One of the areas that everything here is doing is really creating data. We heard data is the new oil before. That's true. It, it's being generated at a breakneck pace and it's costly. What, what I'm gonna talk about here, it says, taking your file services to the edge. It's about bringing the performance against all of that data and also doing it cost effectively. I've got so many things to cover here. I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'm not gonna do it all justice. And my marketing guy was here, he'd, he'd yell at me, but, but from ransomware detection, recovery from security intrusions, uh, fast access to large amounts of data, all of this happens because we've got this edge to cloud sort of story. And Ron? Oops. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. Um, has anybody heard of Satera? Nope. Oh, one, one person. Oh, because you talked to me. That's why you heard of Satera. Uh, before you talk to me, right? No one's heard of Satera. Satera has been around for 13 years. I've been in the storage business for 25. I really didn't even hear about Satera. Uh, it, it's it's been a it's been a sort of a uh, an under the radar sort of performing product. But you see here that it uh, it's probably tough to see in the room here. But you see here that Satera really has a lot of analyst sort of play. We, we've done a lot of work to redress the needs of customers with large amounts of data. You see here on the radar screen, we're the closest to the middle. Obviously, the bullseye is where you want to be, and we're, we're the closest. We're deployed, and we have these devices in over 50,000 locations around the globe. Most of the Fortune 100 use us. We've got a lot of accolades that have gone out to us, and it's all around the storage distribution. There's a lot of other people in the space. They've got a lot of ways that they can do this, a lot of ways that you can use large object store. One of the reasons why I'm here is because of the architecture. I'll go through it in a little bit, but the architecture is what allows us to scale and scale greatly. Couple of customers, Army, Navy, Air Force, General Electric, WPP is a large, uh, the world's largest ad agency. The, 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 the largest of the large are using us. They're using us for a couple of reasons. One, performance, also scale. IBM, HPE, they resell our products. We become sort of under the covers. If you go to IBM and you say, oh, I like some performant object store, they lay us into it. So you may not have heard of Satera, but we're out there and we're out there in a big way. So there's a couple of things that go into understanding Satera and understanding how to use data is you have to go back and look at how it all started. Now everybody knows uh, all about block storage. And I, I bought my big arrays and I did block storage and I put Oracle on it, I put SAP on it, blah, blah. The vast amount of data in the last 10 years has been unstructured. And a lot of people have made these unstructured appliances, all right? Network attached storage, NAS devices. And, and what happened was they said, oh, well, this is a great idea. So we'll keep growing it and we'll keep growing it and we'll keep growing it. Basically, what they did was they keep scaling up these NAS devices, and that's fine when you're sitting in your corporate office, but when you start to extend outside the corporate office, things get a little slower. All the stuff that we talked about, all the, the, the splash 
top stuff with, with the, the the access and the speed and all that sort of stuff, all the stuff with the Wi-Fi. When you start to go into the next layer, gets a little slower. And then when you start to work from home, hello, COVID, it becomes really bad and all the VPNs are breaking and all sorts of stuff is, is happening. So, so what Sotera did was Sotera said, all right, let's build it ground up for this problem. And so what we did was we built a global file system and that global file system allows us to load the file system all the way through the continuum. So the same file system is available to you, whether you're sitting in the core and the edge or the far edge. Now that has a really big implication because now all that data that I'm generating, one, I can generate it locally. And then the file system is shared globally. The files can be stored in S3 back in the cloud. So what Cetera does, why all those companies and big businesses and government like us, it's local performance with cloud-based storage. That's a big deal because now not only can we do the cloud-based storage for sort of a ubiquitous saving sort of wherever I am and, and it's always up there, but, but it's also allowing me to drive down my cost. And not only can we save it into the cloud, you know, think of all the big cloud providers that are out there, we can do this on prem. And that's what our friends in the military like to do. They, they like to save things on prem. Just a little use case our stuff is on battleships, warships, and they launch these things, missiles and stuff. Every time they launch one of those things, they don't press the button and hope it hits a target. They get all this telemetry data, real time, goes back to the boat. And then the boat is hooked back to Stratcom. Local performance, get all the data. And then in the background, what we do is we asynchronously, but continuously replicate the data, okay? What that does is it now secures it. Now we have to be able to manage that. So, if you see on the screen, the blue bar on the bottom, that's the global file system. That contains all that stuff that I just talked about. That allows us to distribute to wherever it is. On the left-hand side, what you see is what we call a portal. That portal is the window in, right? That's the window into taking a look at what's going on in the file system. And that portal will give us insights and analytics and all the stuff that is table stakes that you need to do. But here's the most exciting piece about this whole thing today. And the most exciting piece about Cetera is that middle bar, that sort of grayed out area, there's a connector. That connector allows us to now open our file system. By opening our file system, we can do stuff. We can ingest intelligence into the file system. We can ingest things like security. We have a, a part number for McAfee. So if you want McAfee inserted into the file system, you can do that. Veronis, one of the problems with um, uh, all this ubiquitous file access is governance. How do I govern? We ingest governance into the file system. We have an SDK that allows the customer, the business, the entity, the service provider to build their own things for their own purposes into the file system. That's a big deal. The statement earlier, data is the new oil. That's not, it's an old statement, but, but the data is the new oil is very true. And what we're doing is we're getting access to the metadata so that you can get the analytics you need on that. A little bit about sort of a, a little more detailed architecture. If you look at the architecture and how do we get performance here? Well, if you look at the right-hand side, you'll see those S3 buckets. That S3 buckets could be on-prem because customers buy their large objects stored and put it in their data centers, or it could be sitting in one of the big ones. Doesn't matter. Our software 
sits in that portal with the file system. It talks S3 out the back. And what we do is on the front of it, we talk SMB NFS. What's that do? Well, first of all, we have a mapping. So we're very performant by mapping all the S3 stuff. Okay, so there's a, there's a gain there. But what we can do now is we can scale on the other side of things to any of the clients that are out there that write SMB and NFS, and that's pretty much everything. And not only do we do that and have that capability, but what we have one more step. You could, of course, just go straight into the S3 bucket, like I have in the lower right-hand corner there. That's fine. But if you really want performance, you've got really a lot of data, Think of those Navy warships that generate tons of data that are out there. You want to have extra performance, so you put an edge, what we call edge filer, out there. What that edge filer does is it ingests the local writes, caches them on disk, and then passes them back into the core. So local access, regardless of wherever you're at. With that, we can lay on top of any of the infrastructure that's out there. So we, we, don't, we don't care what's going on. Christian said before uh, from Zerto uh, about it, they're, they're agnostic, we are too. We don't care what's out there. Obviously when we sell with HPE, we sell with IPM, we sell with Dell, they have their preferences. But what we do is we lay on top of that. We lay our file system on top of that so that we can have primary access, secondary access such as archiving and sort of a long-term retention we also have the ability to do endpoint somebody mentioned android devices everywhere so uh, uh, apple devices anywhere tablets we have endpoint access and then container access container access is a little bit of a misnomer i'm sort of over my skis on that one container access in june okay so the, the goal in june full native kubernetes so what we have is the entire continuum of how your business is generating data and allowing them to have it performance. There's a whole bunch of use cases that we can go into. One of the things that I get hit with all the time is, oh, so you're a, you're a NAS replacement. Well, I guess we are. I guess we, we could do that, right? So if you wanted to scale up your, your NAS because we've got software that you can build as big as you want, I guess we can do that. It, global file system is distributed, so uh, it, I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that that's the biggest use case, but that seems to be the one that people hit me with all the time. If you have multiple sites and you need to do collaboration, think about the global file system, everything saved to a cloud or a shared resource, I have now allow collaboration to happen. Endpoint synchronization, one of the table stakes sort of things is everybody that's on their laptop and they're saving files locally, we've got a little endpoint agent that does file sync and share and endpoint backup. So that's included. So sometimes people say, oh, do you do backups? Well, yeah, we do. All these things are offshoots of really what the, that architecture is of the file system. Interestingly enough, and I'll just mention it here, when we start talking about the endpoint protection, that's backing up this thing, fine. But if I'm in the habit of just writing, I'm writing the data, I'm saving it to an edge device and then it's being replicated to the cloud. I don't just save the file there, I also version the file there. So just like Zerto, when they started talking about CDP, the continuous data protection at the VM level, we are providing sort of uh, continuous protection uh, for the file level. We now have version control. So every file that's saved from all those multiple uh, site collaborations, version control. What's that mean? Ransomware. I have recovery time objectives near zero because I can go in and I can see where my intrusion was. Media is a big thing for us video surveillance, people that are generating all sorts of data quickly, rapidly, they need to capture the data. If 
If you go to your local grocery store and there's cameras in the parking lot, those things are continually feeding. If a grocery store doesn't want to have petabytes of data sitting around, they want to be able to write it quick and then get it out of there. And then obviously when you distribute distributed sort of a data process, a part of data storage, distributing to the cloud, okay? All of that stuff, there's a whole bunch of reasons why there's a cost savings. You're using the least expensive sort of storage. You're getting the highest performance out of the, the devices. We can support multiple endpoints, multiple clouds. There's a lot of different ways that we can talk about performance and cost savings. So with that, I'll just wrap it up. Uh, if you wanna get in touch with me, all of my, uh, my booth gear did not make it here today, so I don't have cards or whatever. So if you wouldn't mind, just take my email down. You can email me here, all right? We can uh, get a 30 minute sort of a discussion about how we can help you in the business. And if, uh, but because Ron and uh, my love for Ron's events, if anybody here has attended and you wanna get a trial license or whatever, I'll, I'll extend the license to you. So Ron, with that, just in time for lunch.